Hello YouTube world, it's Johnny Mo coming to you with uh, high efficiency mowing. I want to show you some of the reasons why I have to be so efficient and why I have to you know make sure that everything's in order. As you can see I have games almost every night and <clears throat> when you're like right here Kayla graduates from elementary school at 10 o'clock so that means I got to be there. So as you can see, this is a very busy schedule. In fact, there's a makeup game right here now that's not on the board, but my wife puts this up so when I leave the house, I know what I have to do. So let's go outside. Let's talk a little bit about some efficiencies. Um, <clears throat> all right, what I've done here today is, like I do every morning, I put the deck up, I clean the mower out, um, Make sure it's, the blades are still sharp. They got a good good edge on them. I will change them out every two days if I have to. Uh, usually three, whether where they need it or not. I don't like going three, four days. <clears throat> and I know that sounds a little excessive, but I promise you guys that you're going to need to change these blades. I, I see some people cutting, you know, 40, 50 lawns and not changing them for a couple weeks. That's that's a mistake. You're losing productivity because the sharp blades will cut faster. It only takes you, if you get a nice setup, probably 10, 15 minutes in the morning. You know, um, I, I can't stress this enough. Getting sharp blades on your machines, not letting them get dull. You can move faster. Um, choosing equipment. Uh, this is a 61 inch Snapper Pro. It has an ICD deck on it. And the, this is probably one of the most important things that you guys can um, do is choose the right equipment for what you're doing if you don't need a 61 inch deck obviously don't buy one if you're gonna need one get it um, another thing is saving time is even as little as this see all they have to do is to change the height is pull a pin out and you might say well that's nice and put the pin where you want it well some have these intricate little things on the side where you gotta pull one pin out pull it out and then pull it back in and push back in that's okay um, but I like things like this. I like things that are just very simple. You can change heights really quick. Uh, I do have a bagger system. I think it's an awesome bagging system. It's an upright. If you're going to buy a bagging system, you know, the upright baggers are really, they'll, they'll bag wet grass. Um, you know, the animal talked about why I didn't like the skag. And I'll show you here, because this has about the same opening as the skag. What the skag was doing it was there's too much grass coming from the front end of it and when it was high and thick it would just drop clumps right here right beside it. It didn't have enough velocity to really push it out. Now when it was dry it would push it out fine. What this deck seems to do and I'll show you what I did to change that is it seems to give it a better pattern from front to back whereas the skag was just mainly right here and then this last blade would throw grass to the back side but the majority of it was from here up and when I'm cutting these high thick lawns it just made a mess of them and the skag didn't second cut didn't break up the clumps enough because it's a throw and go whereas if you have it more tightly baffled you'll cut those clippings up better the skag didn't have a lot of suction when you raised it up a half inch after you cut the lawn to really pick up the clumps and throw it over so that's why I didn't like the skag. Skag was heavily built uh, very nice mower, um, just in the northeast, not a very good cutter, definitely not a good cutter in the wet grass. I've heard other ones say, oh, you know, it's the best cutter in wet, no. I cut in wet grass, 8 o'clock in the morning, look how wet this is. This is soaked, I don't know if you can see it, but it's just soaked. You need a mower that can cut that in the morning, the skag is not that mower. Sorry, skag. Um, let me show you what I had to do, a little bit of modification on blade blades okay for the for the ICD deck they had a big fan see this fan it's huge and what would happen is it would overload that deck in this high high grass that we're cutting in the Northeast and then it would overload the bagger so what I did is I went to a, a smaller see what I did I went to a, a smaller notch blade and what it did is it doesn't overload the deck. I get a good quality of cut, not great, but a good one. And the only time I have issues is when it's uh, fine fescue lawns 
and it's under it's in the shade it doesn't want to pick it up it kind of just wants to lay it down but so did these blades too so that's something that I did I probably could have did this with the skag I just thought spending twelve thousand dollars on a mower or eleven eight that I wouldn't have to play around you know especially with all the reviews that came out so deciding whether or not to bag um, I have this dump and I can get those bags in that dump now two years ago I decided not to put any more grass in my truck so what I do is I route it in a way if I have to bag I will it's either a dump on site or it's a one bag going to the next site is a dump spot this is a time killer and if you have employees I will guarantee you, you're probably not tracking this but if you take your employees to a dump site and you go to dump and you go to dump and you don't have one of these little dumper dogs or dumper things you're sitting there shoveling it out or you're pulling a tarp out or however you're trying to do it it's a it's a huge time waster so what I've done is I've I've made it so that I haven't had a blade of grass in my truck for two years and it's just the way I did it I'm very efficient when I pick out a mower and when I say that I've got a, a probably about three or four emails about why I don't run rockers so I'm gonna tell you why I don't run rockers if you have a walker don't be offended it's your choice you do whatever you want I'm telling you why I don't run walkers number one it's probably the best bagger on the market. I don't know if the 60 inch is the best bagger. I've heard mixed reviews. I heard the 48 inch is phenomenal bagger. So we'll give it quality cut and bagging probably the best. Here's some of the issues. Changing deck heights. I go from three and three quarter all the way down to two and three quarters. I'm not gonna sit in the middle of the day, pull little pins out, hold the deck up, put another pin out. That adds too much time during the day. Probably as much lawns as I cut could add up to a half hour. I don't have a half hour as you have seen on that board I have stuff to do at night I don't live to work I work to live so <clears throat> I need to get in get out and get going especially now since I don't have any employees currently um, we lost our only employee last week he decided he wouldn't move on to greener pastures so he did so that puts me out here by myself so being efficient has to be top priority another thing I have no way to dump the the walker bags into my truck now this is my setup obviously I'm not gonna roll it in there and dump it in there then go to a dump site and then shovel it out but this is my setup right here how am I getting that in there and then again how am I getting it out doesn't make any sense for me it may make sense for some of you guys out there but not to me <clears throat> especially with what I'm doing I don't have time with kids to play around going to a dump site to dump grass out. If I have a couple Time Master bags, I can take it up to the woods in the back and dump it in there. Or if I have a bag, or bag full in there, I can take that and do that. But I need to be as efficient as possible. So when you're, when you're figuring out mowers, whether side discharging or, or bagging, make sure that you have a plan for these bags. I can lift those bags and put them in the truck if I have to. I used to do that. And then I just, I was wasting an hour a night driving out to the dump. You know, it take me 20 minutes to get there, 10 minutes to play around with it, another 20, that's a whole hour. I don't have an hour anymore. When I was single or, or when I didn't have any kids, sure, I can go mess around, that's fine. But now I don't, I have to be at these games at night. And that's just how it is. Another thing is when you're, when you're looking at, what's the ease of height change? If you're gonna run a walk behind, I think that you should stay within the Snapper Pro or um, Ferris line. Their their lines are so nice that they just have a little lever you can just, you know, twist and it rises the deck up and down. Has an ICD deck cut on it. I've seen them cut. They look pretty good. Again, like I said in the Northeast, I've had to change the lift of the blade just because of how much the velocity was coming out and the clumps that were coming out with it. So. When you're looking at how long does it take you to change the height of cut, that adds minutes, that adds hours a week. Trust me. So, routing your system, routing the lawns, making sure that they're, you know, you're only driving three, four minutes in between, if that, and and getting getting out there and getting out, and doing what you got to do. 
Another thing is, in the mornings, this stuff ain't gonna dry out till probably 10, 30, 11. Having a mower that can cut a little bit of this, you know, stack it up something that really doesn't matter too much in the morning. Just side discharging something that does, you know, they don't care what it looks like. And then you can get on the good stuff. Now, I'm gonna make my ruling now. You guys can disagree with me. You guys can do whatever you want, but this is my ruling. Not using the Gravely, the, I haven't used a Gravely or a uh, Bobcat. I'm gonna make my ruling after 20 years what I think the best mower is on the market, best cutting deck mower. It's gonna be the Toro Turbo Force. I've owned a few down the years after just dozens and dozens and test runs and owning different ones. My ruling is this. From now on, it'll be all Toro. The Toro Turbo Force deck is just the best deck on the market for what it can do. You can open it wide open, you can close it down, it has a good bagging system on it. Um, I don't know about cutting at 7.30 in the morning to bag everything up. You might have a few clogs here and there, uh, whereas these upright baggers do not clog at all. So that's my ruling. The Toro Turbo Force, so hey Toro, if you're listening, I just gave you a big huge plug, so you should just send me a free Toro. Uh, I would like to have the G, the, the 5000 series, um, send it to, you know, get my address, send it to me, because I just gave you a huge, huge plug. The second deck I like is the ICD deck, um, just because of the wide opening. The blade, you might have to play with the blades in your area, depending on where you're from and what it can do. I'm, as far as John Deere goes, I've had them here, I've test run them, they're just not for here. They might be for down south or midwest or something, but here in the northeast, they just don't cut well. Uh, I've actually cut a half a fill with an X mark and a half a fill with the John Deere, and you would just puke with what you saw. They say it can cut wet grass, it can't cut wet grass here. It cuts it, it just leaves a huge mess. As far as X mark goes, it's a good deck it's just not for here as long as you're cutting between 11 and 6 man it could be one of the best but you get it in the morning or you get it too high it can't cut all that processed grass it is a great double cutting mower I mean a phenomenal one probably one of the best that's another thing this ICD deck struggles with when you have to double cut with it because it because it leaves the the clipping so thick uh, it has it doesn't clump, but it leaves them thick. So when you try to go over it again, it has trouble picking it up, but it does a good job. First quality cut, you don't have to double cut too much. If I have to double cut or it's a possible triple, I'll bag it. And like I said, the baggings go on site or I don't take them. If, if someone says, hey, you know, I don't want my stuff dumped here or you can't, I, it has to be bagged, I just don't take them. I'm in a position now where I don't need to to take every lawn. We're back in the day, if they said, oh, it's gotta be bagged, I had to do it. I have the bag for my convenience, not theirs. Uh, that's it for me, there's no more bagging. Um, after about June 15th anyway, I don't bag anything, just about, I let it rip, side so discharge. So that's my time, guys. So my recommendations. Um, we don't have any Walker dealers, so please don't you know, email me because every time I mention something about a walker, I get about three people, three or four people say, oh, you're wrong. You don't know, you know, and I'll, trust me, I know. <laughs> I, I get it. If they're really popular in your area, they're awesome. That's cool. Uh, I wouldn't tell you that they stink. You know, I watch Brian's top notch videos and his lawns look really good. That thing looks like it cuts really well um, in his area. We don't even have a dealer for him. And he has a nice setup. He has a nice setup the way he does things with it. And um, it just wouldn't work for me. Doesn't mean it doesn't work. It just doesn't work for me and what I have to do. So take everything into consideration when you're buying mowers. You know, how long does it take you to change the deck height? How long does the deck cut good in your area? These are the, some of the biggest questions. You might be in an area where John Deere is a phenomenal cutting machine in your area. Take notice of that. You might want to pick that up. I can tell you, though. John Deere doesn't cut well in our area, and nor does Skag. But Toro does, Xmark does. These ICD decks seem to do pretty good in our area. Uh, 
I don't see much else here. You might see a few here and there, but I haven't tried the, the Gravely's, so I can't say that it's not a good cutter.